Longtime friends, Dr. Hodges and Dr. Ferguson, have been taking care of animals in Georgia for more than two decades. Spend just a few minutes with them here at Critter Fixer Veterinary Hospital, and you'll see they kind of have a Dr. Doolittle vibe. Definitely that vibe, you know, I, I would like to think I can talk to animals a little bit. On the day we visited Critter Fixer Vet Hospital, the docs and their staff performed 15 surgeries, which included removing a tumor from a rabbit's jaw and fixing a broken leg. These animal dogs have been best of friends since they were undergraduates at Fort Valley State University, then during grad school, and now operating their own not one, but two vet hospitals in their old hood, Bonaire and Byron, Georgia. You know, like Dorothy said on the wheels of the boss, there's no place like home. They worked 60 to 80 hours a week in the early days and were always hello, on hello, call. Hello. As a result, Critter Fixer is now a household name. Quick and easy, sweetheart. You know, we do now do the local police dogs, we do the city animals. You know, I had a guy in here with a rabbit from as far away as Eastman, which is about an hour away. They also treat exotic animals like this red bearded dragon and Gus, this boa constrictor who was thrown away and found in the trash. So, so what we've done so far, you know, we've been on an antibiotic yes. and then the last time we cultured. Mm -hmm. So basically what the, we do, we call a culture and sensitivity. So we get a sample of this and mm -hmm. we send it to the lab. They are country boys who believed in themselves. Not only are they taking care of animals, but serving the community, like helping animal rescue organizations. It really helps us out when we can come in and just get a treatment done by one of the doctors and get antibiotics without there being a massive cost. Many of their patients have been coming to Critter Fixer Veterinary Hospital all their lives. It seems like you're really busy now. Yes, we are. How, how busy are you? Well, we've been in existence for almost 21 years, so you can imagine the clientele that we've built up. Mm -hmm. um, we've gone from a little small, probably 400 square foot building to two over 4,000 square foot buildings. When they first started, Doctors Ferguson and Hodges were the receptionist and kettle tech, as well as the vets. Their passion and love for animals has translated into fulfilling a childhood dream. I've always wanted to be a veterinarian. I want to be a veterinarian since I was probably seven or eight years old. And what happened is we had a dog that was, that was loose. He was running and he got in the road and he was hit by a car. Uh, so what I did is, what every child does is, you try to make things better, you go grab some alcohol. So I grabbed this alcohol, little towel, put it on, cleaned the dog up, and he got better. Now looking back on it, he was probably going to get better anyway, it wasn't that bad. But whatever happened then, my thinking that I made him better, it lit a fire in me that I wanted to become a veterinarian. But their profession doesn't reflect the community they serve. Dr. Frederick Douglas Patterson founded the Tuskegee School of Veterinary Medicine, Hodges and Ferguson's alma mater, in 1944, which has graduated about 75% of African American veterinarians. But today, less than 2% of all vets in the U.S. are black. We're in the 21st century, this is 2020, and we're having this discussion about representation. Yes. Does it surprise you? It, it shocks me, quite frankly. It's funny that you asked that it shocked me, and it did. I, I only knew about four years ago, I was at a veterinary conference when I first heard those numbers. Now I knew it was small, but less than 3%. That was big, and at that time I said, you know what? My goal and my life mission is going to be to try to encourage others that were like me at a young age. They had a love for animals, they had this passion, and they want to be veterinarians, but they don't have to settle for something else with animals if they want to be a veterinarian. You are what you see. You know, I mean, you know, everybody wants to be a football player or basketball player because that's your, that's your definition of success. So if you see this guy who's successful on TV and ha he has these nice things, you obviously want to, want to be just like him. Um, so if you don't see any black veterinarians, you know how it's pretty hard to aspire to be one. These docs can even do house calls or farm calls. At this one place, they've seen three dogs, a cat, two goats, and a horse. They can cover the entire state of Georgia. Okay. Uh, so what's happened is we've overextended okay. and the biceps tendon here is gotten stretched. So we're gonna put a cortisone shot in there and 
straight wrists. And they were so compassionate. And they've always been compassionate with our animals. And that's just, that's how they've always been from day one. That's how Dr. Hodges, when we first met him, he was that way. You know, he walked into the room and, and it wasn't a handshake, it was a hug. And that to me made me feel that much more comfortable having him treat my animals. I mean, they're part of our family. They are absolutely without a doubt part of our family. They could have taken their talents to bigger cities like Atlanta, but serving rural middle Georgia is where they believe they were meant to be. I want to come back home. So I want to provide good veterinary care here in middle Georgia. And I also wanted to, you know, show kids that from my hometown that anything is possible. Critter fix events for what? We are uh, country strong, country baby. Strong. Country strong. Tamara Banks, Black News Channel.